Welcome to all. Now this is the background for the Wright M3A1 Scout car. The main production variant of the M3A1 Scout car was a lightly armoured, open-topped, machine gun armed, four-wheel drive vehicle designed to be used in a reconnaissance role. The M3A1 Scout car was crewed by a driver and commander and there was seating for six additional occupants in the rear. Powered by a Hercules JDX six-cylinder inline petrol engine delivering uh, 100 uh, HP, the M3A1 Scout car had a maximum road speed of 50 mph and a uh, 30 US gallon uh, fuel tank giving a maximum range of 250 miles. The vehicle's four-wheel drive and bumper mounted unditching roll enabled it to cross uh, 1.5 foot wide uh, trench and climb a 1 foot uh, high step. Maximum folding depth was 28 inches. The armoured body of the M3 A1 Scout car was produced by Diebold, a lock and safe company. It had a maximum armour thickness of half an inch and was uh, open topped, providing good fields of fire but no overhead protection protection for the occupants. A canvas cover was provided for protection from the elements. The underside protection was also uh, limited, giving little protection from the effects of landmines. The M3 uh, A1 Scout car was typically armed with a 50 caliber uh, Browning heavy machine gun and one or two 30 caliber Browning uh, machine guns, all were mounted on a skate rail uh, which uh, pintle mounts could be moved about. Due to its open top, the occupants were able to employ their personnel weapons. A total of 20,918 were produced between 1939 and 1944. This was one of those vehicles that um, saw so extensive service uh, as a lend lease vehicle with uh, the Russians and they received uh, in excess of uh, 3,000. In Soviet army service the M381 was used as an armoured personnel uh, carrier by brigade and corps, reconnaissance units and motorcycle battalions and regiments operating alongside the BA4 armoured car. The M381 was used as an armoured command vehicle and a gun tractor for the ZIS uh, 376mm field gun, although the towing hitch proved to be unreliable. The, un the uh, M3A1 remained in widespread service throughout the war. Now it's from Wikipedia. It's worth noting that the White Scout car become one of, became one of the most popular armoured personnel carriers in the Red Army and the Soviet military uh, used them uh, the same way as the Axis forces, mainly in the role of reconnaissance or command and staff vehicles. Thus the reconnaissance company of a mechanised brigade uh, had uh, three to four uh, M3s, uh, A1s, and uh, the Corps reconnaissance uh, battalion already had one to six armored personnel carriers and the motorcycle regiment um, of the uh, also had uh, eight to thirteen perhaps their only drawback which the soldier, Soviet soldiers identifying was their challenge in the uh, towing role it's good um, maneuverability uh, visibility and powerful weapons made it uh, possible to effectively use the M3A1 as an armoured personnel carriers during street battles. A report from the Czech campaign. On the 25th of August, the uh, first to break into the outskirts of the Czech city uh, of Bruno was the reconnaissance company of senior lieutenant I. Matushkin from the 4th Guards uh, Mechanized Brigade of the 2nd Guards Mechanized Corps. Overcoming various obstacles, strong automatic sh machine gun fire uh, from the Germans, they resolutely and boldly moved forward the armored carrier uh, M3 Scout Car of Sergeant B. Bezev took the lead ahead of the rest. The driver of this car noticed in time the German artillerymen were hastily deploying a gun in order to destroy the oncoming personnel carrier had it broken through, but the Germans turned out to be too slow. Bezev, uh, scout car pet, sped up and the machine gunner, uh, ordinary sergeant Ivanov, acquired the target and fired uh, the 50 caliber machine gun, rather ruining the day of the German gun crew. 
following the scout into uh, Bruno the soldiers of the uh, motorized rifle divisions from the 4th Guards um, <coughs> mechanized infantry uh, brigade entered. So that's a fairly typical noted account of its use and this vehicle in many ways um, led the way for um, later Russian developments of armoured personnel carriers and it should be noted its a similarity to the M3 A2 uh, white half track as well which fundamentally uses uh, a very similar layout and arrangement except you're just replacing the rear wheels with the um, rubber, with the uh, continuous uh, rubber band uh, half track so on with the unboxing of the Tamir kit. Everything's small. This is the unboxing now for the M3A1 Scout Car um, Lend Lease version. It's by Tamir in 135th scale. Now, this is for a going to be the second model uh, to go in a diorama. Uh, with a JS2, so there's going to be these two vehicles with it. So, to me, a kit, fairly recent one, I think. Two versions American version and Russian version, but it's only got the crew figures for the Russian one. So, we'll start with the instructions. And with this kit, you get a nice little multilingual history sheet. I really, really love stuff like this. Thank you, Tamir. I know you guys are a quality com company, but the fact that you've taken the time to produce a background sheet in multiple languages, history, general arrangement drawing, um, it's little flurries, touches like this that I really, really like in kits. Um, it explains things uh, like that the color schemes uh, for the Russian and American ones were the same. They were the Russians didn't repaint it or anything when they got them in lend lease. Uh, I was surprised to see that they didn't. Replaced them with a DP DPK heavy machine guns and rather kept the 50 cal and the 30 cals on it. So let's look at the instructions and we'll take a look at the kit components. So nice, and I'm going to say this having just built a dragon kit, this <laughs> looks like an absolute love beauty to build. Uh, instructions step by step. I actually must admit, I still think I prefer the airfix instructions with their <coughs> indications of what just what's been just done, but this is still not bad. Um, starting off with a chassis, quite a lot of detail building up to here. Uh, adding in, assembling the drivetrain for the four wheel drive, adding in the suspension and exhaust. I think it's going to be very much a case of build as you paint, particularly with getting like exhaust colours right and stuff like that. Quite a lot going on here, so clearly positionable uh, front wheels. The uh, unditching roller, I like that they do include... Um, statements of what the separate uh, parts are so the wheels they will need flats putting on there interesting to note that they have a uh, vinyl poly <coughs> cap to making them easier to fit but these wheels are going to have to have some kind of flat uh, sanded down onto them uh, I'm not sure if you will achieve a bulge but just something to get them, give them a weighted look because they're just too 
rigid in their current format. As this is going to be going on a street base, you can't hide these so much with mud or sunk down a bit into the ground, so they need something. They need some attention to make them weighted. So, this is showing how they go on. Uh, it does appear that there's slight difference between the front and the back wheels, uh, judging by the hubs. Then on to the interior. Again, this is a case of paint as you go. Nice detailed driver's position. Plenty going on. Uh, no detailed engine bay. Uh, you can see something from below. So there's probably an aftermarket for this if you want to build it opened up. Um, interior bulkheads. The uh, casing around the wheel wells. Showing the stowage. Then the front, the bonnet. The various uh, options for the... Uh, the driver's position open or closed nice touches there again the front grille which can be displayed open or closed as well I like that to provide a radiator some uh, protection that is nice a nice touch um, not sure how easy fitting the driver will be so i can see this stage having to be that you are checking for the fit of the driver he's going to be the first figure assembled and then make sure you can still easily fit him in i'm pretty sure to me i have planned this that you can do towards uh, the end the uh rails for the uh, machine guns it's a nice feature of this vehicle that they do have these running rails where you can slide the machine guns around um, and they have a decent arrangement of the uh, bracket as well may be possible to actually position this in a locked and an unlocked position as well if you want to have somebody sliding this around that's uh, a nice touch there External gear, the jerry cans, the shovels, uh, what looks like tripods for the um, machine guns so they can be positioned dismounted. Bit more exterior detail then in with the numerous seats in this thing. Seats facing in all directions. Which makes for quite an interesting interior. There's a lot to like with this. Then the 50 cal and the 30 cal. Plenty going on there with the mounts and the ammo boxes as well. And then the five figures that really make this thing uh, quite busy. The commander, the driver in his tanker's uniform, two gunners and an infantryman. Whether I'll use that particular figure or another one is another matter. He seems a little bit of a spare part, really, in, in his current pose. Um, I also have to find out whether these vehicles, the Russian vehicles, did have uh, radios in them. I believe there may be an unused radio post in this kit. I'm not sure. I'll have to certainly look that up on the Russian radio sets. Then we have the painting guides. You've got one uh, American vehicle and you've got two Russian vehicles. Uh, this one indicated 3rd Tank Army Eastern Germany and this one being Red Army Unit Unknown Prague, which is the one I do want to do. Uh, so that's the one I will be making and painting and echoing. So nice, clear instructions in a quite a decent book. 
I have so, I build so few Tamiya kits when your normal fare is wrestling with the likes of A model and such like. Something like that is beautiful. So, I've already taken the parts out of the bags. Uh, because at the time of film, filming, my JS2 is complete and uh, this will soon be an active project. Uh, so, let's just start off. You've got the main cabin driver's compartment. The flooring there, the tread plate on the floor, quite nicely done, nicely textured. Um, driver's position there. The uh, panels, the drivetrain, which appears to have been done in one part. So you don't struggle so much with alignment options. Reasonable detail on the inside and outside faces. Be interesting to see if you mic'd this up whether it uh, matches the scale thickness of the armor. That would certainly be worth doing. Probably come quite close knowing uh, Tamiya. There are two identical sprues here. Quite cleverly done on how they've planned out with the duplicate parts. So you've got. The tyres, as I said, these really need a uh, flat put a uh, weighting, filing them down a bit. Three of the seats and for the rear compartment and the uh, driver and front seat passenger. The casing around the, the uh, boxing in around the wheel wells and some of the external bits and pieces. Knowing Tamiya's ability to plan things, they've uh, not going to leave you too many spare parts and leftover parts. Again, the detail is pretty good. They've seen they've done it left. Looks like they've done it left and right side. These wheels can really be made to pop, I think. Um, but the whole vehicle will benefit from a shed load of weathering. Chassis, fenders, hood, and the rails. Again, very high quality moulding, clear parts. Other companies, the you know something like this would be multiple parts, and all credit to Tamiya for that. They really, you know, manage their uh, parts count so well. You can sure be pretty sure that if there's any fit issues, it's going to be down to the modeler rather than the kit. Oh, it's been so long since I've built anything from Tamiya, even an aircraft. Um, it's been way, way too long. Uh, but given that Tamiya don't really do much of what I enjoy building, then. But this, you never know, this may change things. I may find this so enjoyable that I will just have to build something else. On with the next sprue. A lot of the detail gribblies here. The uh, exhaust parts, suspension, interior detail, headlamp covers. Again, all very crisply cleanly molded with not even a single hint of flash not even on the sprues everything very crisp and all i says this is not going to present any problems so for the vehicle alone i've decided not to unbag these bits that's your Uh, seems they've done the 30 cal and all the parts associated with that including its stand and then the 50 cal now I may well add another machine gun from the uh, from some spares I crewed a fair while back um, just to busy this up a little bit
the uh, little vinyl caps certainly part to be looked after and not lost poly caps for the wheels and I'm not going to take the windscreen and headlamp out of the bag you can see that two windscreens you expect that to be clear it's mostly going to be hidden anyway um, you'll see something from the inside uh, when you're looking down into the vehicle but really not too much and not so much to worry about on the masking so one thing I haven't Um, box yet is the crew figures I like that they are in a slightly different shade of plastic so you've got five men to uh, for this interior very nicely molded I think they were on the box art the figures look quite Asiatic and I do believe if you look here that uh, you really kind of realized when that fellow got to Prague that he was uh, a long way from home and there's a commander looking somewhat more European so certainly I like that this you can sort of see in the figures in the moldings that uh, these guys capture the uh, many races and uh, national, what would now be nationalities that made up the Russian army from Siberia to the west from the Far East to uh, Europe and they do capture the facial features quite well uniform detail looks perfectly adequate to me with plenty of bagginess to it and looseness to it so I cannot as I said with other things, see this presenting any great issues there. I believe it's the driver and his uh, tanker's hat. A famous Russian padded hat. So that's the crew figures. And it includes their one guy's uh, SMG PP, uh, P, not PPSH, PPPD or something like that. I should know that but unfortunately I don't no parts falling off the sprues which is also nice all everything is nice and secure so you're not, not feeling you're going to lose anything and the final element is the sprue set is the decals again you're not going to I'm not going to be using many of these most of these are for the American version I like that they've done all the lettering in one piece, so you can have your nice patriotic slogan. It shouldn't be too difficult to put on. Um, I, to me, uh, decals have got a bad reputation, so I do not know how well this is going to go on. But as it's on a nice flat surface, you'll then just probably need a setting solution to make it sure it settles into the panel lines and that side of it. So it's going to be those that are being used, and I believe these two, but not much else. No, none of this big American stuff, which I'm fair, which nice to put that then in the stash. So, that's the unboxing for the 135th scale M3A1 Scout car, which to me in this case are primarily presenting in its lend lease version. Looking at the reference files for it needs a little bit more clutter added to it and I can well imagine that many of these would have had a uh, third machine gun popped in there, maybe a 50 cal. Um, it needs a bit more clutter added to it. They do include ammunition boxes but and the one thing I do notice from the reference photos that missing is a spare tyre. <laughs> And that I think is that may even be something to look up online on Hannans if they have an M3 Scout car spare wheel in resin because I do feel that seems very present looking in a lot of reference images. So it's a nice kit. My only complaint is that the vehicle is a little bit sparse, it needs cluttering up a bit. Um, 
but that said there's plenty out there available that you can do to busy this up and I believe you can actually find photos of this exact vehicle as well online and I believe I do I found that as well so that's going to go with the JS2 on a diorama base along with some uh,